translate into English. Moscow has unleashed a powerful electronic war on Israel, causing GPS systems to go crazy, paralyzing Israel's national airspace and closing the country's largest airport, Ben Gurion. The event is directly related to developments in Ukraine and the accumulation of a huge NATO naval power in the Mediterranean. As we have mentioned, Moscow has analyzed a scenario of a nation in the Mediterranean. Under no circumstances would he want Israel to get involved. Moscow's position is clear: stay neutral in the U.S. NATO conflict. Damn, shut down their whole airport. That's crazy, bro. The conflict will change the form of NATO in Europe. The Americans are leaving in Belarus. They're already in Ukraine like a NATO member. Y'all don't think they're gonna try to actually defend them? I would. Man, Kala, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Barakat, Yahweh, Barak. Shalom. Kahlaimla, Yahweh, Bahashim. Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kadash, all praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled The Greatest Book on Earth. Most of you probably already know that Christopher Columbus, with his real name is Christ Cristobal Colon, and he's Jewish. He used the Bible in order to research the lost tribes, the 10 tribes that came over to the Americas. And they showed this in the movie called 1492. So the Bible is a treasure, and it is also a road map to the treasure. These mysteries in the Bible give us insight to what's going to occur in the future. <coughs> Matter of fact, when you look at the Medes, let's go to a map. When the Bible is saying, I will stir up the Medes, it's talking about not only Russia, but its surrounding territories that it is a guard unto. I mean, if you look at the map, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Armenia, and in the Bible, Armenia is many. And Turkey is in bed with Russia. Now, you might say, well, Turkey is supposed to be an ally of NATO. But they, <laughs> but they are playing both sides of the corn. Matter of fact, they recently purchased Russian air defense missile platforms, the S-300 and the S-400 missile systems. I'm going to pull up a scripture. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to go to Jeremiah 51, verse 11. So when you look at the map, it's not Russia acting alone. The Bible is going to stir up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. So this is an assembly or an alliance of nations. Matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah 51 and 11. Jeremiah I'm going to go to 51, <clears throat> verse 11. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord. 
the vengeance of his temple. What do we call a missile defense system today? A ballistic shield. It's called a ballistic shield defense system. Just like the Iron Dome missile defense system that's shielding Israel. So he's stirring up the kings of the Medes. So this is an assembly of nations. So Russia is forming a semblance of the Medo-Persian Empire, which is a spiritual kingdom reincarnated. Iran is in bed with Russia. So is Turkey. Matter of fact, let's go to uh, verse 28. Prove that further. Go to verse 27. Set ye up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her. The kingdoms of Ararat, many, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. So that captain is Russia, Gog and Magog, leading this assembly of nations. And the daughter of Babylon is in its crosshairs. And the land of Israel is an ally to the daughter of Babylon. That's why the Bible says the least of the flock shall draw them out. In fact, let's get that. Jeremiah 50, verse 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. So the least of the flock is talking about Amalek that's dwelling in the land of Israel. They have appointed a most high's land into their possession. Pursuant to Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 4 through 6. So if you look at the map, we're talking about an alliance, an assembly of nations that are going to shoot arrows. We call intercontinental ballistic missiles arrows. Still to this day. Let's go here. Jeremiah 51, verse 27. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her. The kingdoms of Ararat, many, and Ashkenaz appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. So we're going to look at this area today. Ararat, many, Ashkenaz. These are former lands of Japheth, or Japhetic lands, occupied by the so-called Europeans. So when you look at the map, many, modern-day Armenia. See that? And Ararat. That's where Noah's Ark landed. They found fragments of that wood in Ararat. That's the land today that we would call Turkey. And then when you go to Ashkenaz, that's further to the west, these lands, which taps in to some of these NATO nations are going to sell out, like Germany. Germany is in bed with Russia, with its pipeline deal. 
and its petroleum and economic deal. So is Iran. See, well, we're talking about an assembly of nations. Let's read this real quick. Many, we read about many, Armenia and Russia relations. Bilateral relations between modern day Armenia and the Russian Federation was established on 3 April 1992. Though Russia has been an important actor in Armenia since the early 19th century, the two countries' historic relationship has its roots in the Russo-Persian War between 1826 and 1828. The Russian Empire and the Kahar Persia, after which Eastern Armenia was ceded to Russia. Moreover, Russia was viewed as a protector of the Christian subjects in the Ottoman Empire, including the Armenians. Now, the Ottoman Turks helped to take down the Byzantine Empire around 1453 in modern-day Istanbul, Turkey. But in the former or old days, it was called Constantinople. After the, dissolution, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Armenia has shared Russia's approach aimed at strengthening the Commonwealth of Independent States. So they have an assembly of nations. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Armenia shared Russia's approach aimed at strengthening the Commonwealth of Independent States. Russia and Armenia are both members of a military alliance, the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Let's see what the Bible says. Watch this. Jeremiah 50, verse 9. Or lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. An assembly of nations. So the Bible is a true book. Let's read that assembly of nations again. One moment. Okay, this is Russia, Turkey. We'll come back to that. So the Commonwealth of Independent States which have established a collective security treaty organization. So Gomer is also joined unto them. We'll read about that first. Let's go to Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38. So that captain is Russia modern day and its allies. Ezekiel 38, verse 4. I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with sorts of armor. And I, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. See, so this is an alliance, a coalition, or a federation of nations. Verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, with missile ballistic protection platforms, and armored personnel. Persia, Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya 
verse 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. See, and we read that. That guard is the captain of the host of nations, Russia. Back to Jeremiah 51, verse 27. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, many and Ashkenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. So Gomer is modern day Turkey or Ararat. So the Bible is accurate with pinpoint precision. Only a fool would question the Bible's validity. I'm going to show you. See this? These are the type of mockers and scoffers that we get every day. Look at the comment on your own. And my response, <clears throat> let's go to this content page. See this? Absolutely nothing. The Bible has been amongst the top 10 selling books for decades. See, so the Bible says that mockers and scoffers would come in the last days. See that? So let's get back to the lesson. The Bible is extraordinarily accurate. Russia-Turkey alliance. Let's get right to the point. Following the disillusion of of the Soviet Union in 1991, relations between Turkey and Russia improved significantly and the two countries came to rank among each other's largest trade partners. Russia became Turkey's largest provider of energy, while many Turkish companies began to operate in Russia as early as the 1990s. Turkey became the top foreign destination for Russian tourists. See this? So Gomer is joined unto them. The area of the ancient Ararat, or the Noah's Ark landed in that area. See that? The Bible is an amazingly beautiful book. Let's go back to Jeremiah 50, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Let's look at that word arrow. We use it today to describe intercontinental ballistic missiles. Arrow. Let's see if it's in here. Let's do this. One moment. Okay, here we go. Right here. Check this out. The U.S. military used the term broken arrow to refer to an accident that involves a nuclear weapon or nuclear weapon 
components. See? <clears throat> so the arrows are talking about missiles. Let's close out with one more. Isaiah 13. Let's go to verse 15. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. If you're joined unto this beast, the European Union, NATO, and the daughter of Babylon, America. Verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. So the Most High, we read in Jeremiah that they're going to come upon the land as caterpillars. They're going to surround this place from off the sea coast, submarines, uh, naval destroyers, aircraft carriers. Verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the meads against them which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare the children in Babylon. The glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the child deeds, excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Nuclear fire. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. I'll play one last video and close out. Yeah, I was shy. Another brother posted this up. So one of the times that I tried... Are stirred up. All praises to you. How about Hashem? How was I? Hashem or Kakadash or Rakatam? The greatest book on earth and number one sailor. All praises to you. How about Hashem? How was I? Hashem or Kakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Point me and abide by What you got next? Lord willing. Shalom.